Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. And if you like the content, please give us the thumbs up. We're still headed for a thousand likes on the stream. So keep the love coming and we'll keep the TA coming. All right, let's welcome who's coming on the stream today. Jojo, hi. All right, June 19, welcome. Edwin, all right, let's go, Bill. Thank you for that. All right, Aiken is here, Silent Sandal. All right, Derek from Brooklyn. Okay, Hassan, Oregon in the house, right? Giving, uh, giving you a little bit of a later start today for our people out there on the West Coast. India up late. Thank you. Okay. We have Illinois, Vanatu. Welcome. Right. Flipped Burger is here. Hi. All right. The Caribbean is in the house. <laughs> right. We have Bangalore, Halifax, our friends in the UK, Croatia, Canada, Miami. Right. Saskatchewan, Canada, San Bernardino, California, right? Ike, welcome, okay? Mel Myers, California, Mark, hi. Rachel from Denmark, Joe Mike, 813 in the house, along with Oslo, Tampa, Orlando, the UK, Corona, California, right? We have Mizzou, right? The Cryptoverse, South Africa, Koreatown, Madrid. We got them coming in from all over the place today. All right. Norway, welcome. All right. Mark, I appreciate that. As everyone comes on to the stream, welcome, welcome. All right. Uganda and Pennsylvania. All right. All right, folks. Let's dive in to your market update. The question is, will crypto go up in April? Today's a red day, right? And the new theory, the new theme is an old theme and I'm bringing it back, especially for our friends in British Columbia, Canada and Indiana, right? Is buy on red, right? Buy on red. And the question is, how fast do you have to move, right? How much red do you get before the next liftoff? All right, let's get into it. For token metrics customers, the Astra DAO emails are real. Okay. Astra DAO is a DeFi protocol supported by token metrics. It is not token metrics coin, it is a DAO which, which we have supported. If you're a token metrics customer, and you've gotten emails, you need to complete KYC. You need to complete whitelisting, right? KYC, whitelisting. And the third point is your Ethereum address. So KYC, whitelisting, Ethereum address, not from an exchange. Let's dive into the markets. Let's talk legacy, just so we know where we are in the world because the inflation number is coming out, right, in about, say, eight days. That will probably be the worst inflation number in history, right? And as usual, the stock market is not worried about it. Now, whether or not that makes sense or not is a whole other story. But for the moment, 46.12 in S&P futures um, is a level of interest. I don't know if they can get through that or not. Just look at stocks relative to where they are versus their all-time high, OK? 
okay, versus its all-time high. I mean, I just look at this and I'm like, wow, either equity's got to go down or crypto's got to go up. Bond market, all right? Now, the unrelenting rise in U.S. interest rates, right? We're looking at the yield on the 10 year note government bond has temporarily stopped at 243. Well, I guess it's, I guess that the inflation number is horrible. 243 will not act as resistance. However, for crypto between now and the number, if 243, 2.43% 2 in the 10 year note yield acts as resistance, then we don't have to freak out in crypto. Now, if they, if they ram it through 2.43%, that might be the red day you need to get involved because the strategy from, you know, like I said last week, the strategy is buy on red, find support. Okay. And do that until it doesn't work anymore, period. Because if it does continue to work, there are much higher prices coming in crypto. Now let's start with eight hour chart. So here's how we're going to break it down today. We're going to do like a mini deep dive into just Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then we're going to look at three altcoins that we like based on what's on tokenmetrics.com. So our friends out in Bangalore are, are asking for, you know, a different pricing platform for token metrics. And don't worry, don't worry. I will help you here, right? Look at some of the coins that are on token metrics as a way to show other people, okay? Everyone out there, all the benefits of a subscription, right? Plus all the good TA or all the TA we hopefully do on the show. That's hopefully good, all right? Because you're only as good as your last trade. That is an old Wall Street motto. So let's begin with Bitcoin on an eight-hour chart. 48,400 would be what I would call an organic stopping point. I'm not mega focused on resistance, but that's where resistance was. That's what stopped the market, okay? So here we sit, right, just off resistance. So it's not this, oh my God, terrible thing that Bitcoin stopped at 48,400. Now, if there's a dip, if there's a dip, right, you might see a return move to 44,100. That's the 38% retracement of the big move up, right, that started around 37,500. So you might see 44K again. Personally, I'm wondering about what happens if you don't. In other words, what happens if everybody's sitting around waiting for 44 and they don't get it? Okay, that, that smells like moonshot to me. But that's where support is. And I guess if you're going to be a technical trader, you, you might hold out for that. 43,500 is an important level from DeMarc work. So in DeMarc work on the Bitcoin daily chart, it's basically a range between 48,000 and 43,500. So the point is, what do we want? Support. What are we looking for? Support. There's support near 44. There's support near 43,500. So if there's a big red day, I don't know, today or tomorrow, that's where you would expect to find support. Now, in my mind, I cannot be the only person who sees this, right? Especially since it already bottomed at 44 before. So perhaps there's four more down days, maybe, or four more sideways days. Right. But if there's a spike down to 44, I'm telling you right now, in my opinion, you got to be quick. You got to be quick because I think Bitcoin is possibly headed for some sort of, for lack of a better term, like a God candle. Right. In other words, if they can't get it on a dip, then massive buying could come in, particularly since Bitcoin versus equities in terms of relationship to its highs is way off. But I'm giving you the technical level if there's a down move. Now let's talk about ETH. Ethereum made a new high over the weekend. Again, a little bit surprising. The market's always got twists and turns, right? 
Looks like the war scare trade occurred earlier, and then the weekends are now bullish, which is interesting. So ETH makes a new high, and stochastics don't. And then the stochastics roll over, and ETH corrects. Now, in the past, in the range trading environment, this would be a sell signal for a return move back to the bottom end of the range, right? And you made a living doing this for like 10 weeks. Now, for this picture, what you want to ask yourself is, okay, the negative signal's here, and will the negative signal that worked in the range trading environment work in the new trending environment or in what we think is the trending environment. So here it is. It's negative. Will it work? Now let's go to the four hour chart on the four hour chart. 3450, 3450 is an important, what I would call pivot level in ETH. If Ethereum is above that level, then you can be constructive. So in other words, if you see ETH punch through 3450, then the dip today was the dip. Now, if ETH can't get itself back above 3450, you might expect a deeper dip. It's as simple as that. That's how you use a pivot. You punch through, it's good. You can't get through, you wait. All right? Now, if ETH does punch through, we're looking at 4,186 as an upside target. Now, let's get more tactical with ETH. More tactical. Right? 3510, resistance. Support, 3393. All right? Now, that's really tight. And you're like, gee, Bill, that's exciting television. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. A lot of times when ETH goes sideways, even if it's for a couple of days, right? ETH hasn't really moved a lot, right? Since it climbed above 3,300. Yeah, there have been, there was like one flush, but it's just sort of glued to 3,400. Frequently when ETH goes like sideways like that, it's not a perfect sideways, but when ETH is sideways at the top end of a range, that can be constructive. So be aware of the signals that were negative, right? That worked in the range. Also be aware that if those signals don't work and they just trigger a sideways band in ETH, that could be not only constructive, but ridiculously constructive. Ridiculously so, okay? Particularly if all the range trading types are shorting it, right? Because that's how you fuel a trend is guys who trade ranges get short and then they get blown out along with new demand coming in from momentum players. So I don't want to be, I don't want to be an idiot, right? And ignore things that call for perhaps lower prices short term. But I want you to have in your mind, because I think you need to have a core long position, right? Not investment advice, that if this thing turns around and shocks everybody. It's because people were either waiting for a dip or short and didn't get it. Okay, let's look at some altcoins, right, that are popping up. So these are altcoins showing up on tokenmetrics.com rankings that are over a over billion dollars in market cap. So if you want the super small stuff, that's on tokenmetrics.com. I got to leave that for the customers. However, we've got some, some altcoins here that have interesting charts that I want to take a look at. So we have DeFi chain, we have DFI. Okay, so there was a big rally from two to six, right? And then that rally tried to resume after a correction. Now I'm looking at a chart point like 445. So if this, if this coin, DFI, is above $4.45, cents. That would be an indication that the bulls are still in control of the market. Okay. Today is a pretty serious red day as of say, you know, 3.30 PM Eastern time. So it's a pretty serious red day. So if DFI can hold above 445, that would pretend probably a new high. Now, if DFI cannot hold above 445, 
Then you need to ask yourself if bulls are exiting and taking their money. But as long as the AI continues to like it, let's do what we've been doing throughout the whole rest of the market in Bitcoin and ETH. Let's find support and act accordingly. Okay, BitDAO, right? <clears throat> right around $1.30 is a chart point of interest. Okay, why is it a chart point of interest? Well, because BitDAO broke above that and is just hanging out on it. Could it be a case of like a bird on a wire getting ready to fly? Okay, or is it a case of, you know, the easy money has been made and it's got a rounding top formation? I think if this is above $1.30, in other words, in these small altcoins, if today was the dip, right, you'll know soon because this thing will turn around and start going higher. Now, it hasn't moved since mid-March, so we'll see if the AI, sometimes the AI really catches good trades when things fall into a range. Obviously, there was a momentum move up, okay, but if the AI holds it at 130, this is an altcoin to keep your eye on. Now, as you may have heard from the videos last week, if not, I would encourage you to take a look. Solana still ranks as the number one coin on the tokenmetrics.com AI rankings. Why is that important? Because Solana is a mega market cap coin. And it's been a very long time, if ever, that I've seen a mega market cap coin be the top ranked coin, perhaps other than Bitcoin. Okay. Solana had what I call an organic resistance point at 136. So nothing goes straight up. It hit 136 and came off. Now, in last week's videos, we laid out the levels, you know, 140, 150, where if Solana can consolidate and turn around and take those out, that you're talking about much, much higher prices. So Solana is going to be a major indicator as to whether or not the market is in massive momentum zone, right? Right, like ADI is pointing out with his rocket ships, okay? Is this showing the next move up, okay? Steve J is showing stocks, showing massive divergence, okay? Meaning possibly, you know, stock market could be toppy, all right? So that, that brings us, to the final coin, which is Steppen, okay, if I'm saying that right. Token Metrics got our private group involved in this. The original analyst at Token Metrics discovered this. This guy also discovered Helium. Essentially, you buy NFTs that are sneakers, and then as you work out, you get paid in Steppen tokens, okay? So this has been a monster moonshot from... 50 cents up to $3, almost like a Matic style move. All right. As, as people figure out that workout to learn could possibly disrupt the fitness industry. And again, you know, this is something that we got our private group involved in. For technical analysis purposes, right? 220 is an important level. So if this token, comes back above 220, that means somehow the people who are earning it by walking, right? And the selling pressure coming for them is being overwhelmed by people who want to get involved in the project by buying the token. So if you're in Steppen, watch 220. All right. And that is the market update. All right. So we want to welcome Vienna, right? And we want to welcome... Kevin, who was giving me love for being from New Jersey. Thank you. Okay. So we have Solana, Near, Seller, and Vulcan. All right, folks. Let's click over to DeMarc and get busy on that as well as, as your requests. So let's go to Metaverse.
All right, so this is this is Vulcan. This is a rounding bottom for sure. There's a volatility warning here. There's a nine top. And for those new, right, you get a nine. DeMarc breaks down trends and ranges, okay? And he counts a certain set of conditions, like, I don't know, the high is higher than the high two days ago. So when you count those conditions one through nine or one through nine, if you're in a range trading environment, that's the top and the bottom of the range. One through nine, top, one through nine, bottom. Now, if you're in a trend, which right now we're assuming we're in, okay, it goes one through nine up called the setup phase. Then there's a sharp drop. And then there's the countdown phase that goes one through 13. Okay, so small trend, knee-jerk reaction, big trend, as counted by a quantitative system. So as you can see in Vulcan, it's been in a range, right? Every time you get a nine top, it goes down. Every time you get a nine bottom here and here, it goes up. Now, when you look at this, there was the nine top, there was this huge FOMO move, but then it came off. And that can be your counter trend move, this awful candlestick. Then Vulcan came off again, and it looks like they're trying to buy it. So if you ask me, assuming today is the dip, $22.35 could be an objective here. Okay. Right. So if it's a trend, right, Vulcan's got a shot at $22.50. Now, one thing I did learn at NFT LA was that this idea of like metaverse being in pieces, like there's metaverse A, B, and C may not be a wise investment thesis, right? That's like saying there's going to be three different internets, right? There's only one internet. Now, of course, Vulcan may be a part of that. And you'll know that whoever said that an NFT LA is wrong if Vulcan can actually take off, right? If resistance is now support. Okay. Are we doing a multiple metaverse world? Well, you know, 1625 was resistance and now it's the floor. Okay. And if you consider how beat up this is relative to where it was, I think 2235 is achievable. Now, how do you merge the chart with what was said in NFTLA? If the metaverse is sort of a big cosmic concept, there's probably only going to be a handful of big winners. And I don't see why Vulcan can't be one of them. So that's how I would break that down. Now let's go to let's go to layer one, okay, because that's where I've got the Solana charts. So undoubtedly, okay, so someone is asking me what happens for customers that have not received the Astra Dow email. Okay, well, if you are a customer before a certain date, okay, you're going to get the Astra Dow emails. If not, then you're either going to have to email our support department and check with them, uh, check with them. All right. But you had to have been a customer, I believe, before like, you know, just after the start of the year. Now we have Solana on the weekly chart. It's got to get above 151. If it does that, you can start doing moon boy targets at 249. Now let's come back down to earth and check out where Solana is. All right. So Solana made a three wave top at 143. And now it looks like it just made a four wave bottom. See this four? Okay, so nine top, counter trend move, all right? And it looks like Solana can make a new high. I think it can go to 150, okay? So this was the top of the third wave, right? One, two, three, four, five, okay? I don't doubt that Solana could engage in an extended fifth rally based on what the AI is saying. The only question is, is the dip over today or is there more to come? 
Personally, I think when Solana peaks at 145, if the AI still likes it and gives it to you, uh, you know, below 130, then, you know, that's a place to grab it because you've got bigger support at 121. So that's how I would. Um... Okay. What tokens do you think are the picks and shovels of the metaverse? Okay. As I understand it, render is the picks and shovels of the metaverse. Okay. This is what MultiCoin invested in, right? As a way to say, all right, if, if everybody is going to need to have 3D images in the metaverse, render token, right, is, is how everybody is going to connect and have these 3D images. So this is the picks and shovels of the metaverse, all right? That's one way to look at it. There's support in render at like 270. So, you know, it's not clear whether or not this can get out of its own way. But if you're in a buy on red focus in the metaverse, render is what you want to look at. Now, let's also take a look at near because I actually met the person in Los Angeles who built the metaverse applications on near itself. Okay. I had 17 in some prior work as a stopping point. Okay. As you can see, right. Right there's 1772. This is where Near broke down from. Near is also a possibility for like an indexed metaverse play. Okay, not a lot of people talk about that, but this could be such a robust platform that it could be a perfect place to build the metaverse. Outside the box, I know, but if Near is above 1772, okay this can go higher. Now, JP is asking, okay, what do the numbers mean? Okay. The numbers are counting a set of conditions. Like, I don't know, the high is higher than the high three days ago. So the more it, you know, when it counts the conditions, you look for the ninth set of conditions and the 13th set. Okay. That's why those numbers are big and blown up. Okay. All right. Now, okay, let, let, let's see. I'm getting a message here about Vulcan, okay? Vulcan is launching its own layer one in a few days, okay? So let's think about that. There may be a fundamental catalyst in Vulcan. We just did that a, a, a while back, okay? Okay, someone asking for SKL. Okay, so I did Near and Solana and Vulcan. Okay. So the question in SKL is, is the old ceiling now the floor? Okay. You had the nine top. You had no real appreciable decline, but I have seen this. Right. If you're in a trend, it goes one through nine, and then some sort of wild dip, which in this case was this huge FOMO move up and back down about 10 cents. And now the question is, is 24 cents going to act as support? Okay. That's a good question. A lot of these smaller altcoins, you know, have had a couple of red days. I think you're going to want to see people coming back in at 24 cents. I think if you see that, this trend can resume. We see what happens when you look at the four hour chart of SKL. Okay, so there was the 13 top. Okay, that's a sign that things are a bit stretched out, right? And then now this correction may have, I don't know, about eight hours left in it, okay? Or 12 hours left in it before you have to make a decision, are you buying the dip? I would say with things like this, 
where, you know, you make easy money from 12 cents to 32 cents, you really want to see bulls with conviction. Otherwise, what you're watching is people selling out, you know, after a major move. Let's see if there's a weekly chart. All right, so very interesting weekly chart, okay, 13 and a nine bottom, right? But that was, you know, back in January. So one of the things that this coin is telling you is that, you know, the market has really worn people out. Uh, you get nine, 10 weeks of sideways, and then you get these rallies, okay? So this one's got, you know, very heavy resistance around 32 cents. So support at 24, Resistance at 32, right? Will bag holders continue to get out from the looks of this? If it can't get above 32 cents, they probably will keep getting out. Now, that doesn't mean it's bearish because we've looked at this type of chart last week. The question is, will bulls come in and buy the dip? Okay. Okay. So this is C-E-L-R, -C seller. That's what I call it. Okay, you had the nine bottom in mid-March. You had two good up candles. Okay, you've got moving average resistance right around seven cents. And you've got a DeMarc resistance point at 0 0.092. Now up here, okay, you had the nine top. And then you had euphoria for about six weeks. And then it came off. So that's the big picture. Then let's break it down to the daily charts. King is like, are we going to talk about interoperability? King, of course, we're going to talk about interoperability. It's an underrated theme in the market. Okay. Now, with seller, okay, this does sort of look like a top, mainly because you've got this warning signal here. Okay. The good news is, is that it's coming down to retest the prior ceiling. So it made a top. There's a warning sign. But if it holds this level from back in February, right, that means buyers should show up here. And if they do, it's good. Now, as somebody is noting, as Steve is noting, please hit the like button. We're trying to get to 1,000 likes per video. Now, normally the way influencers handle this is they go, you need to hit the like button or I'm not doing any more charts. Okay. Let's not try it that way. Let's do it another way. Let's have you actually like the content. And if you're watching the recording or if you're live, especially if you're live, folks, you're already on the screen. Hit the button, please. All right. Now, Avalanche. Okay. Nine top. This is the daily chart, right? What do you get if you get a nine top? you get a counter trend rally. Okay. Now this is a bit of a warning signal. You had one over here. It produced some downside. All right. The key level in avalanche, right, is 9506. Okay. If avalanche holds and gets back above 9506, then it's on, I think, for a new high. It's easy, right? Right down here was a nine bottom. Okay. And a avalanche went up. And this was a nine top and avalanche went down. Okay. So this is a nine top. And the question is, should you bail out of avalanche? Or should you wait to see if this is a counter trend rally as dictated by the DeMarc theory and then come back in and grab it looking for, you know, I don't know, five to seven days of higher prices. Okay, right now I'm inclined to grab it on a dip, right? If today was the dip, then how bad are you going to feel if it turned around and goes green between now and the inflation number? Because the market has done wacky stuff like that, right? Right, right before or, or like during the release of scary numbers, crypto loves to, to just ramp itself higher because nobody, it makes no sense to buy it in front of big numbers, which is why people buy it, okay? Is our weave ever going to move? Well, we talk about it, okay? 
usually on just about every stream. And the question is, is our weave going to come back? Well, our weave is on a steady uptrend, right? The low for the day is 3702 and that's moving average support. Okay. Now the thing with our weave is okay. So the takeoff point on the last two rallies, okay, was about 4132. And that was also where the give up trade started from. So I would say our weave's got to get above 4246. That's what the Elliott Wave guys called the previous fourth. And you're like, Bill, what does that mean? Well, that just means that's where the give up trade started from. So if you can take out 4246, our weave can rise from the dead and confirm that the uptrend is over. But you got to wait for that signal, okay? You got to wait for that signal, okay? Audio on the four-hour chart is looking good, okay? That finally woke up. It, you know, it's a fundamental idea from token metrics, all right? And it's finally getting going. Okay, let's look at the four-hour chart of Gala. All right, so we have a range between 24 cents and 28 cents. And that's about what you can say about Gala, right? It looks like they're coming after it. You know, it's making slightly higher lows, right? People clearly want to buy dips right? NFT New York is coming up. So it, it appears that every time Gala goes down, there are dip buyers. However, every time Gala goes up, probably because it's expensive on a valuation basis, you've got people selling. What's required here is a catalyst. And what we have seen in the metaverse and in gaming is when you get the catalyst, the moves are huge. Okay, so if you look at Gala on a weekly basis, okay, if you look at Gala on a weekly basis, all right, it, it is the DeMarc count on the weekly chart is headed in the right direction. And there is pretty decent moving average support at 25 cents. So if I was long Gala, not investment advice, I would stay long Gala. Is Chainlink the forgotten child? Chainlink is not the forgotten child by any stretch of the imagination, but I think if people are looking for Chainlink as 100x, uh, you might want to rethink that. Okay. Chainlink's got pretty decent support right around 1651. Okay. And this, like everything else, okay, that is the four hour chart. I'm going to the daily. Okay, so, you know, this is a little bit difficult. Here's the nine top, and it's pretty hard to find where that counter trend dip was. It could be today. However, if you look at this red five, right, there's one, two, three, four, five red numbers, right? If chain link continues to go up, you could have six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to 13. So I, I don't, I am not giving up on upside in chain link, especially if it can hold this moving average support at 1677, right? This is a volatility warning and it can top out. We have talked about this, right? If it's the range trading scenario, right? Range traders are going to trade the range or what they perceive to be the range until they get blown out. Okay. So anything between 1770 and 1870 is where range traders have been selling chain link. Now, if the token metrics work is right and everything is going green on our momentum signals, then I'm inclined to tell you that it's no longer a range and you should be looking to buy, you know, shallow, either shallow dips or scary dips. Cause that's the other thing that bull markets or trends do, right? They scare everybody.
Okay, let's take a look at at FTX token to see what's going on there. Okay, we discussed that FTX had got to get above 52 and it has not done that yet. So it tried to start the new uptrend. You know, it's got the nine, the pause, but it just can't get through 52. If it gets through 52, it's on. Okay. Now, if you want to take a bigger picture point of view on a weekly chart, right? When you see these dips, right? When you have a DeMarc four, you know, that could mean four to five more weeks of upside. So if you go to a four hour chart, maybe you want to try to find a buy point, right? In other words, somebody out there is probably going, oh, you know, this doesn't moon. I'm so sick of this. I'm like, yeah, that's what bull markets do when they shake you out. Okay. So it looks like around this 50 area, you know, if it's above 50, it goes up. When they go below 50, they run stops and come back above it. So I know it's terribly boring to be trapped in a 50 52 range. But if this is a range on an intraday chart, that helps you get ready for a trend on a weekly chart. Chart, take your shot. Okay, Sheldon. Good afternoon to you. Okay, so somebody's like, "Are we going to talk about interoperability?" Of course we are. Right? Let's talk about Cosmos. All right, here's Cosmos on a four hour chart, hits resistance at 32, right? Comes off. So it's probably still acting like it's in a range rather than a trend. Okay. Still acting like it's in a range rather than a trend. Let's pull up a daily chart. Now this is more interesting. So I have seen this before back when I used to work in equities that when this green trend starts, right? One, two, three, four, it could go to nine, right? So that means you could have five more updates. Now, if you're gonna have five more updates and this DeMarc work is gonna hold up because these counts can change, you might be looking at this chart going, wait a minute, Bill, the candle's red and you're telling me there could be five more updates? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. So when I say buy on red, you know, if Cosmos is red, you know, not investment advice, but you know, this could be the time to nab Cosmos. If crypto is going to turn around and go up, I guess, as long as equities hold up, let's look at a four hour chart. Okay. So in Cosmos, again, you know, not a lot going on here on an intraday chart. Okay. It looks like support is at 3026 and it's still acting like it's in a range. If you're buying a dip, you're buying it because you think you're in a trend. Honestly, in other words, you have to make a decision as to whether or not you want to trade this as a range, or if you want to take a shot at trading it as a trend. Now, here's a hint. Trading it as a trend is scary, right? So if you look at the chart, you're like, I don't know if I can do this, man. This market has taught me it's a range. And if I mess with that, I get killed. I'm like, okay. But sometimes the best trades are the toughest trades. So you may have to wait for a red day today. Maybe there's another red day. Patience never hurt anybody, I think. Or... You know, if you're eager and, you know, you, you really think there could be a God candle to the upside in Bitcoin, then having some exposure to the coins you like is the way to go. Okay. Polkadot. Now we talked about Polkadot, all right? We talked about it in the, like, we said, all right, in this 2021 area. Okay. Specifically, I would say more like, 2145 to 22, right? 
And we said, all right, let's think about grabbing some polka dot. Okay, here's your nine top. And then here is, you know, a shakeout. It's pretty much that simple. So was that it in polka dot to 24? Is that all there is from 17 to 24? I don't know. This, this moving average, because DeMarc's moving averages are smart. It only gives you moving average readings, okay? You know, kind of if you're in a trend. Right. This particular moving average is, is a little different, but it's a smart moving average. So it's paid to buy polka dot when it hits this moving average. Okay. That's that, you know, 2189 area. So if polka dot's going to go up, let's look at some fib retracement lines. So 22 is the 23% retracement. And if they flush it out, 2085 is a key level, right? Now, again, we talked about this. Polka dot 21 to 20 is where you want to be grabbing it. I would say when it comes to layer zero and interoperability, that you've got the luxury of patience, at least for the next two days, okay? Okay, Steve is saying, let's face it, it's all about liquidity. I read an article this week about Stan Druckenmuller, right? Famous, you know, famous trader who has a very similar viewpoint. <laughs> that it really is all about the Fed. And as long as they're printing, right? Or as long as they're holding up the housing market by buying mortgage-backed securities, okay? Then guess what? The market can still go up. All right. This is ApeCoin on a four hour chart. Now, I have not used the mark work on Ape to date, but I'm guessing from the look of this, right, that Ape may be four hours or eight hours or one down thrust away from making some kind of a bottom. Okay. It has not worked using another method of analysis to say, all right, if Ape takes out 14, it's a buy because it never takes out 14. Now, if you go to a 90 minute chart of Ape, okay, you can see a 13 bottom right earlier in the day. And then this candle is a nine bottom. So if you missed Ape and you want to take your shot, I say take your shot now based on this DeMarc work, right? And you get a 13 and a nine together, okay, that can mean, okay, that, you know, the downtrend is over. And this has been in a downtrend pretty much since it topped out around $15. Okay. Now, most of the bottoming signals here have not worked, right? But if this bottoming signal worked, you could be looking at 1225. So unless this is going to eight, take your shot. Just take your shot. Okay. Again, not investment advice. Use a stop, right? Right. Okay, this is the 90-minute chart of Elrond. Okay, normally I don't go this granular, but there was really good support at 183. And as you can see, everybody and their brother was down there looking to buy it at 183. Okay, let's go to the daily chart. I don't, I don't know that this is going to give you a big read because of how sideways it's been. Right. I mean, it, it, this has been sideways. There's a nine top. There was a nine top here. So it's range bound, but there's resistance at 200 and it's not backing off. So there's a warning sign here, which means one of two things either Elrond is going to top or it's going to blow through 200. Now, risk reward is not great here. So if you're a believer in Elrond and you're holding it, then I would, I would imagine you would continue to hold it. If you don't have an Elrond position, okay, then, you know, you may have seen the dip or you've got another four or five hours of dipping and that may allow you to get in. 
Okay. The Warpler said, my birthday is in July and I want to be lounging in the sun. Well, sir, we will do the best we can to get you there. Okay. One of the original token metrics company values was crypto retirement. Okay. V chain. All right. Now at, at four cents, we suffered. This is a coin I love to love, even though the price action was awful. Okay. I love to love it at four cents. It goes up. Okay. I want to, I want to just cheer and put a lampshade on my head. And every time you want to do that, okay, you should probably be careful. Okay. Because there's resistance at eight cents. Now, realistically, V chain has got to prove that this sort of rounding bottom or this base is for real, right? If this is the bigger, the base and the higher in the space, then there's going to have to be a big day in Bitcoin where altcoins follow. If you've suffered in VeChain up to this point, yeah, on one hand, you could say, well, at eight cents, you know, this is where the give up trade started from. I'm going to give up. And then there's me that would say, you know what? Yeah, it's at resistance. But F that, if it's a trend and you held on for this whole awful range, one of the things that Druckenmuller said that was really interesting. Is one thing that, you know, made him rich was that it paid to hodl, or in legacy terms, it paid to be a pig, which is hold on to winners and not get shaken out or take profits too early. Now, this is crypto, not stocks. So I am a fan of taking some money off the table. But again, if you were hodling this or you had already taken some money off the table, leave it. Cardano Nation. What's up, Cardano Nation? Let's do a Cardano price prediction. Okay. The give up trade in Cardano started at $1.27. So the first thing that's got to happen in Cardano, it's got to take out $1.27. Now, when I look at a weekly chart, Okay. Cardano is pretty straightforward, folks. You got a nine and a 13 bottom in mid March. Then, for the last, say, two, three weeks, Cardano has rallied and now it just sits here. Okay. I actually think this is going to go up, not investment advice, right? I actually think this has a legit shot at going higher. I mean, if Solana is going to go up, if ETH is going to go up, and if we're headed for a God candle in Bitcoin, all right, this is Cardano on a daily chart. Now, what you'll notice is you have a volatility warning. Okay, you have all these candles where every time it goes to $1.25, which is previous resistance, people sell. Right? People who got holding bags, okay, who got scared by the move to 78 are getting out. That's not atypical. And it's not unreasonable. Like if they don't believe in the trade anymore, they're out, right? They got a huge rally and they're done. Now, frequently when people do that, that's when real trends take off. In equities, we used to say retail always sells the first uptick, okay? Retail always sells the first uptick. Might it be a pineapple pattern lampshade? Well, it might, but that's a reason to be even more careful. Okay. Did we cover Rune? No, we did not. So let's do that. Okay. So again, epic rally. You always have to be careful in things that have outperformed. All right. All right. When they've outperformed and then the market starts to catch up, sometimes these coins, I don't know, they correct a little. So there's a, a warning signal up here about volatility. That's actually produced bigger up moves. Now in Rune, okay, you've got a nine bottom. You've got the possibility of more downside, but what happens? People start stepping in 
where this rally took off from around $10. So at an even number, okay, people start coming in and they st they're like, you know what? I want it. Somebody asked me how much higher this thing can go. I don't know if Megan's on or she's not here. If we started late, she was the one who asked. Yeah, Rune can go a lot higher. Okay. Not investment advice. There is technology execution risk. Okay. But, you know, $11 is a good support point. Rune is obviously below that. Okay, now if you look at the chunky part of this rally where it went from like, I don't know, modestly trending higher, there is support at $10.48. So in this $10, $10.50 area, that's where the support is, okay, in, in room. And in coins like that, during an underperformance phase, that's when you want to try to catch it, right? Okay, perp on a four-hour chart. So perp shows life, okay, and then it comes off. I'm showing on a four-hour chart that whatever's happening now is a nine bottom. So take your shot in perp, not investment advice. Is Matic dead? No, I don't think it's dead. I don't think it's dead at all. I haven't even looked at the chart and it's not dead. Matic, every time Matic convinces you that it's dead, that's when it wakes up. Now, realistically, it's in a range, okay? It hasn't done anything, okay? It sat here between, I don't know, for basically the entire month of January. So you go back between red days and green days, right, in this range. So this is the daily chart, right? Green, red, green, red, green, red. Okay. What does that mean? Well, one of two things. Either you grab it on a red day and you say, all right, I'm going to hold on because ETH and DeFi were rallying last week. And it means capital is going to come flying into the space. So I don't think I want to give up on Matic. Is, is it in a definite uptrend yet? No. Okay, we, we did not do Abagochi yet. All right, now, please, folks, if you're on the stream, right, I know there's two different types of people on the stream. There's an early crowd for the PowerPoint and the late crowd. If you're in the late crowd and you're getting your request done, please hit the like button. All right, now, when I look at this, okay, I see resistance at 208. Or is it support, right? Avagoji go, you know, is trying to get through this level. Now, there's no particular DeMarc work that would say, you know, because it's so sideways. Okay, but let's look at the weekly chart. So it's trying to go up. It's trying to go up. I think the whole market is trying to go up. So on a weekly chart, we discussed this, right? It looks like it's bottomed. And it starts to count like one, two, three, four, all the way up to nine, potentially. So you got eight or nine, you know, seven or eight, I'm sorry, six, five or six, potentially good weeks in GHST. Okay. Now, again, what do they do? They wash everyone out. They, they frustrate you. They take it up, but then bag holders sell. Okay. Now, when bag holders are done selling, as I've said throughout the entire stream and all these altcoins, which includes Bitcoin, right? When, when guys who have been caught or guys who have got money in trades start taking profits, the question is, does the market fall apart as if it's still in the range or do guys come in and rush in and buy it, right? In other words, folks, if this blows up, Right. And Bitcoin goes to like 41, 
and ETH gets washed out, then we'll do a new trade. Okay, so Engine doing the same thing, right? Two good up weeks, right? Starting off this week, consolidating. Let's go to the four-hour chart. Okay, Bull Runner 76 here the whole time. We appreciate that love, sir. We appreciate that. If we could hit the like button for you, we would. Okay, Engine in a range between $1.71 and $1.98. Okay, waiting for something to happen. Clearly, at $1.71, people wanted it, All right? And, you know, at $1.98, the DeMarc work showed a top. So I don't have an immediate bottom signal other than a candlestick showing, you know, at $1.71, people wanted it, okay? In other words, people's attitude is buy on red days. Is that the best thinking? Well, I don't know, but engine hits the 38% retracement right on this down move. So it goes up and then it corrects 38%, which is totally natural, right? Totally natural, right? You can't have something going straight up. I know in crypto you can, but frequently those are things you sell in the big caps. You're going to have retracements. Okay. Okay, what about HEX? I don't think we've done DeMarc work on HEX because it's not in the system. Okay, actually, let's try one more thing. Okay, no HEX in the DeMarc system. There's got to be more history on hex than that. Okay, let's try this in hex and see what we get. Okay, this is what we're going to go with in hex. Okay, so I'm switching to an 89 minute chart. Okay, so let's just let's just think about hex short term, right? See this Williams moving average? Okay, that's starting to spread out and potentially be negative. Now, realistically, hex is just in a box, right? It's a 16 cent, 14 cent box with hex sitting in the middle. So there's not a lot to do or say. And the question with hex is, right, there are a lot of big holders like whales hold a huge percentage of hex okay this is a four hour chart as i understand it right so if you want to be you know you want to take a more constructive bend on hex conceivably this is teacup and handle with the handle obviously being just god awful which is very typical of handles. So if there's a catalyst in hex and if hex is any good, well, you'll know soon. Now you may have to sit here and put up with volatility and chop, but if hex is ever going to go up again, it should go up off this formation. And it should also irritate and frustrate you in the handle phase. So if you had hex, and you're like, all right, is this ever going to go back up? You know, maybe you would give it a chance. Give it a chance. Okay. A very strange coin with very unusual tokenomics. So make sure you manage risk accordingly. Manage risk accordingly.
Now, one thing we can try to do, which could be interesting, is see what tokenmetrics.com has to say about Hex. In other words, one of the reasons why you get the platform, people, is so you can investigate what's going on with the coin of your choice. So the token metrics grade is okay on the daily chart. It's improving on the weekly grade. So like I said, that's somewhat interesting. Now let's see what our momentum indicator is telling us. Okay. Now recently hex has flipped bullish. One of the things that I tell people, especially when you go all the way back, most of these signals in hex have worked. Like here's the one that didn't, but this bearish signal worked, this bearish signal worked. And of course there was the God bullish signal in May of 2021 right before Hex basically went from zero to 50 cents. Now, when it comes to Hex, how will you know that this signal has merit? Because you will get follow through, okay? As with all these signals on token metrics, the question is, do you get follow through? Do you wake up one day and see your coin going in the direction that the signal says? It might take three or four days or more. But as I said with Hex, it can't hurt to just hang on. Now, BSW, okay? So massive moonshot from 60 cents to $2. And, you know, this is what probably our quant guys would call your standard altcoin chart, where it moons, okay? And then turns around and traps everybody and goes back down. So I'm not seeing any particular reason to buy it on the four hour chart. Okay. On the 90 minute chart, I do see kind of a climactic puke nine bottom. Okay. So if you were ever going to take a shot in BSW or if it was ever going to be any good, you would see the rally now. You would see the rally now. Okay, Dalton, I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, we're looking at Ave. Okay, so Ave had a huge moonshot. And then it had another huge moonshot. And if you look at the 90-minute chart, okay, people came in. You did an A, B, C correction, right? It goes up, everyone goes yay, and then it wipes everybody out on the 90 minute and turns around and goes back up. So someone's asking for Bitcoin, so let's just check where the market is. Check what's going on in the market. Okay, see, they're bringing it back. Everyone's looking for the dip, they get the dip, and then all of a sudden, uh-oh, it goes back up again. Okay, Zillica. Okay, so let's talk about this. So Zillica on its four hour chart has got itself to 14 cents. That's the 50% retracement of the huge move up. Okay, this is metaverse as a service, right? Now, this downtrend doesn't look complete to me. You may have 12 more hours, right? I guess if this gets totally flushed out, you could be looking at under 12 cents. All right, I know, I know you don't want to hear that. All right, now... This seems a little bit easier to stomach, right? 14 cents was the prior high from September. Okay. Zillica is coming back and returning to 14 cents. 
And if it holds and the old ceiling is now the floor, then the metaverse as a service comes back. Okay. All right. Audius. Okay. Give up trade in January started right here at 150. All right. You probably got two more up days. I'm guessing in Audius, right? Where they try to take out this high. They try to take out 140. I'm sorry, 150. Now on the four hour chart, interestingly, there is no topping signals. You would think you'd see them. Yes, this looks like a five wave top where everybody gets really emotional. Okay. So, you know, that's something to consider. I would wait on Audius to see if it takes out a dollar fifty. You know, nobody wanted it. I mean, nobody wanted it at 67 cents. And now at a dollar fifty, everyone wants to FOMO in. I would wait to see if it takes out a dollar fifty before I would go crazy. Okay, MIR. Okay, so this coin, as somebody noted, may be going crazy. There's a 13 top on the four hour chart. Market currently ignoring that. Old resistance was at $1.91. All right, again, resistance at $1.90. And I'm not really seeing any reason to get off this trade right now because this was a wave one up. This was a wave two down, and this could be the start of wave three. So, you know, look at how this thing tortured you, right? This thing, everybody gave up on this thing. Everybody, right? I mean, they were giving up. I mean, the, the real give up trade started at 251. So if you see this thing continue to close above 190, then stay with it. Why not? Okay, so we have Cody. Okay, starting to get a little bit tired in front of resistance at 33 cents. That's on the daily chart. Let's look at the four hour chart. Okay, and there's the 13 top and the nine top at 32 cents. So in order for this to go up, you're going to need to see powerful action above 32 cents. Otherwise, it looks like you know, if you want to hodl this, you're going to have to tolerate a range, right? Or it's just sort of a top, right? Now, if it goes through 32 cents, forget about it. It's on. Okay. Thank you for putting the symbols in. That's very helpful for me, particularly with the DeMarc work. Okay, so Moonbeam, GLMR. Okay, like some of these other coins, this looks like a five-wave top, right? This was the, the three-wave, the four-wave, and this is this grand moonshot where it goes from $3 to $6. Now, let's take a look at the weekly chart. All right, so this is the daily chart. And the question is, can this get above 545? Okay, so this is a nine top, right? And it looks like people are in a big hurry to take their money at 545. Now, Tom's asking, how much attention do you pay to things like RSIs or stochastic? It's pretty oversold on the daily and most alts. Would you wait for it to reset? Okay. Before jumping into a trade, All right? Obviously, if you can get any type of momentum indicator at the bottom end of its range, 
okay, before jumping in, like we're back at hex, okay, where the momentum indicator, I look at a 13 period RSI, you know, if you can get RSI and it's not overbought, so much the better. Okay, let's look at Bitcoin. Let's take it down to an 89 minute chart. Okay, so basically once it hit 48K, right, Bitcoin reset itself. This momentum indicator came all the way down to 33K. Support was at 45 and they're in grabbing it. Okay, so waiting for these things can reset, can help. I did Solana already, but, you know, given what Token Metrics thinks about Solana, given the fact that, you know, we're probably Solana maximalists at this point, okay? The question is, where's the dip in Solana? 136, 136 was resistance, or that's like the big trigger point for the next rally, okay? You probably got a little bit more consolidation to go. It's a four-hour chart. So maybe this time tomorrow, Solana will have given you the dip or have worked off the overbought condition. Sometimes that's what these big coins do. Now, again, when you look at this on a 90 minute chart, the top in Solana was 142 on April 2nd. Okay. And then it goes A, B, C, right? A simple sideways correction that takes you back to a prior ceiling at 128. So you've got pretty good risk reward in Solana. If 128 was a former ceiling and now it's a floor and it's trading at 131, well, I mean, your risk is that it goes back down to 122, okay? But if you're not taking risk by buying dips, particularly with the token metrics AI score off the chart as of this recording on April 4th, all right, you know, shoot your shot. Justin, I appreciate the love. Thank you. Okay, so again, you know, this looks like it can make a new high because there was a three wave and then a four wave down. So Rose can make a new high. Right. And all of these altcoins, you know, they're at resistance, but they're not backing off. Right. You see, you have the big up day and then everyone sells and then they bring it back. Right. So, I mean, if this thing takes out the high at 32 cents, you know, I mean, look at how, look at this thing. Look at how destroyed this stuff is. Right. This is like layer one metaverse. I mean, this is a DeMarc three, right? You could have five or six more up weeks as we've talked about it, right? Alpha has rebranded. Alpha, Audius, and Perp. They broke our hearts. They broke our hearts, okay? As with all altcoins though, okay? When you have a good team, which Alpha does, all right? Now, every time you've gone to get long alpha on strength, you have gotten smoked, all right? So serious bag holders get out, particularly when it goes from 25 cents to 70. So if this thing could turn around and get back above 60 cents on a daily chart, that would be very constructive. You know, the question is, are you looking at a bear market rally or are you looking at a new trend, okay? This is the four hour chart. Okay. So the, the move to 70 cents was the three wave. The low four hours ago was the four wave. And there can probably be a new high, a new high for the tactical move in alpha. So, you know, I guess the theme that's emerging from looking at all the altcoins is the trend is your friend. Okay. 
Steve J says, not as bad as the sushi heartbreak. Sir, nothing was as bad as the sushi heartbreak. I mean, that was just a killer. From, from nine to four. The only saving grace was I did not get bullish when it went to nine the final time. But it still broke my heart, right? So you have a nine bottom on the four-hour chart of theta and evidence that people are buying the dip. You know, when you go to a weekly chart on this, it's going to look like everything else, right? You get this spike up, right? But then people correct, corrects, and then people want to grab it, right? I mean, if you had six more up weeks in theta, would you want to grab it? It's just a question. Okay, so you had a nine top here. Okay, that was around 407. So every time you get the nine top, it's gone down. Okay, it's gone down. So this is the nine top and here's the corrective flush. And the question is, will buyers come back in? Will buyers come back in? Okay, right now, I think the answer is yes, there's a nine bottom and they're going to come back in. This time tomorrow, we'll see what's going on. Okay, again, if people were looking for deeper dips in Bitcoin and ETH, they didn't get them. But you did get them in altcoins. You did get the dip today. I mean, they just smacked this stuff. Okay, sushi. Again, the three wave was up to five. The four wave correction was to 420. So I think for this move, sushi can make a new high. Okay, I don't think this is over. Okay. You know, they want to test 509. That's where the mega painful give up trade started. Now, again, going back to this idea that institutional capital has to find its way or is going to find its way in the DeFi. So, you know, Sushi goes up three weeks in a row and everybody goes, I'm out. Can you blame them? No, you can't because of how destroyed it's been. But like I said, if there's six more up weeks and you get the type of downdraft that you got today, so let's pull in the 90 minute chart. Okay. So there's the 90 minute chart of sushi, right? Down, 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 13 bottom, puke it all the way to like the limit of the 13 bottom at 414 and it bounces. Okay, you got the bounce. Okay, sell in May and go away if April is hyperbolic. You may get up for all of April and most of May. Fingers crossed, right? I do think you sell in May, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering, like today, right? It looks horrible. Bitcoin's down 3%. Everybody is selling and it comes back right? The future of money, right? As long as there's no stock market calamity, crypto probably wants to go up. Okay. ICP, a, a very popular ask. So it's been in a range. It's still in a range. It goes to 23, everyone buys. It goes to 21, everyone sells. Okay, it looks like people wanted it back here at 21. Okay, realistically, in order for this to take off, it's got to take out 24 and a half. Okay, that's where the give up trade started from. Okay. Okay. Aziz is looking for L LRC loop ring. Okay. Justin is saying Bitcoin ready to rip. Dude, I think so. I think so. I mean, you know, you couldn't get. Okay, Paris says, do we still have bear market in early summer? Well, sir, I don't know, but selling May and go away worked last year. And it is a wacky world. In other words, if Bitcoin 
adjust itself to either 52 or 57. Can, can you imagine Bitcoin $10,000 above current levels? What people will be saying? I mean, has anybody talking about Bitcoin going much, much higher right now? No. I mean, maybe they are at Bitcoin Miami, but they're not doing it now. Okay. Loop ring, it's sort of like, you know, the old, the old ceiling is still the ceiling, right? So the old ceiling is at a dollar twenty-three, and it needs to take that out to get to a dollar forty-nine. Okay, but right now it, it hasn't done that yet. But like you said, um, you know, it's it's got to have a catalyst. Okay. All right, Mon Mon Montreal and Australia is waking up early. Okay, ETC may be, may be the leading indicator for Bitcoin. I think so. ETH never really dipped today, to be honest with you. Okay, it, it never dipped. Okay, we did look at Render as uh, an index infrastructure play. Okay, I don't think we looked at the 90-minute chart. So we're looking, somebody called it picks and shovels for the metaverse. Okay. This is the nine bottom in render. Okay. Just like the nine top at 325. Everyone liked it at 325 and no one liked it at 270. So if render is going to bottom, it's going to bottom exactly where it did on April 1st. So headed into NFT New York, I would think that that would be something. Okay. Wrapping it up here. We have GMX, which I don't, I don't have in the DeMarc work. Okay, still trying to look up GMX. Okay, here's GMX. Okay, sometimes in these destroyed coins, I use the FIB speed resistance fan. Okay. GMX, in order to be good, just label this. Okay, it's got to show sustained action above 40.71. So it's had a nice rip. Right. And if the rip's going to continue, you're going to see it above 40.71. If it can't get above 40.71, then from 20 to 40, that was your move. Okay. Aiken says, I'm Crypto Kramer. I appreciate that. Wow. Listen to this. All gullible crypto novices on this chat who are getting fooled by charlatans such as token metrics because they can't be bothered to get it, you know, to get right things like fib retracements and stuff like that. So that just disappeared. Learn about market caps, TA, and fibs. All right, let's talk about that because we always like to address anybody that comes on and you know, I don't know, for lack of a better term, hates on us. So let's talk about that, right? Token metrics, like any other technical analysis indicator, right, is best used in conjunction with other methods. So you need a basic chart, your support and resistance, and maybe your fibs and your fully diluted market cap, right? You have your technicals, your fundamentals, okay, and your token metrics, right? You, you want to know if that AI is telling you trend or, you know, is the trend your friend or is it a range? What are the small cap altcoins that are coming to the top of the circle? So we're not fooling anybody. We're not trying to do anything except help you, right? Help you by sorting through thousands of coins. Some guy earlier said there are so many coins. How, how, did, how does the market figure this out? Right? Is there enough liquidity for all these coins? The answer is no, there isn't. That's why you want to know what the top coins are by having you know the AI filter it, and then you can chart it with me or yourself. Okay. 
So, you know, we want to help everybody. We do. We want to help everybody. Okay. Driftless is asking, did we do near? And then I saw something whiz by about AVAX. So let's finish up with AVAX and near. Okay. So in AVAX, you had support at 9190. This is the 90 minute chart. So we did not cover this earlier. Okay. You have a nice ABC correction. This is ABC, right? You have a nice 13 bottom that was, you know, a couple of hours ago. And now AVAX is turned around and going the other way. Okay. We did not look at the 90 minute chart of near. So again, if you got all the way to this video, you know, the 90 minute chart obviously won't be good six days from now, but if you're watching the video, love you anyway, especially if you got all the way to the end. Okay. So near right nine bottom at 15, 17 was resistance, right? And nobody cares that it was a five wave top it was a five wave top for about five hours. And then they're just after it again, right? So near, it looks like it wants to go to 20. Okay. It wants to go to 20. All right. All right, friends, that's a wrap for today. Let's summarize what we talked about. What do we talk about? You can be patient for a dip. You can be, especially if you've already got a core position, but what you may have witnessed today, that may have been the dip. That may have been the dip. Okay. So if equities don't go down and there's no geopolitical event, we could be headed for a God candle in Bitcoin, right? Which could take ETH and everything else with or in reverse. We could be headed for a God candle in ETH. I personally think ETH should go to 4,000. That's my opinion. Okay. Now, will you get stopped out if you buy a dip? You might. But Token Metrics' site is, in many ways, particularly with Solana, is telling you that the trend, the uptrend is your friend. So stay with that. Okay. All right, friends, that's going to be it for today. Driftless, Steve, always appreciate you uh, giving us feedback and things to talk about in the chat. I, I do notice that. Driftless giving me some notorious love, right? Seattle John, thank you. All right. That's it for today, folks. That's the market update. I'm Bill Noble. I will be here tomorrow.